Let's we'll see how this works. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Does it have any instructions? <laughs> Jamie and Brennan Cassidy were first pregnant two years ago. Then they found out the fetus had a severe genetic disorder. During the first pregnancy, we found out that the child, if born, would not live for very long, and we chose to terminate. What was that like? Pretty horrible. It was, it was really hard, you know, for a you know pregnancy that you wanted, and, and for us, we didn't know what what would come next. This time, the Cassidys got pregnant using IVF, so they could use a genetic test to screen out for the disorder. Soon, they found out they could also screen for all kinds of common diseases. I have type 1 diabetes, and I would do anything to not pass that burden along. There's most likely a misconception out there that when people hear genetic testing, I'm sure they're thinking immediately, trying to make your child the next LeBron James or the next Elon Musk. And that's not what this is at all. I think every parent, you know, just wants to bring a healthy child into the world. And that's what, you know, we were looking to do. It's routine for doctors to test fetuses and embryos for cystic fibrosis, as well as other diseases caused by a mutation in a single gene. But the Cassidy's used a new type of polygenic test that screens for conditions caused by multiple genes. It's called PGTP and it works by collecting biopsies from embryos and then testing them for their risk of developing diseases. These are the results that they give you, and it just says the likelihood of type 1 diabetes, type 2, and then it goes down the list. Testicular cancer, prostate cancer, a couple types of uh, melanoma, hypertension, and schizophrenia, among other things. That's a lot of potential diseases. Did you end up choosing the embryo with the lowest risk for type 1 diabetes? We did, yeah. PGTP is controversial because no one knows how accurate its predictions will be. So far, fewer than 100 babies have been born to families who used it. The technology has been on the market for three years, offered by just one company, Genomic Prediction. For all of human history, birth has been sort of a lottery. What you have going on is chance, and sometimes fate is kind, and sometimes it's cruel. What we're trying to do is to give people a better start. But diseases aren't the only thing polygenic testing can screen for. Some parents are excited about using the technology to optimize their embryos for all kinds of things, like mental health or intellectual ability. Octavian, the daffodils are over here. We have to go this way. Simone and Malcolm Collins are entrepreneurs who believe that happiness itself is genetic. Some people are just happier on average than other people. And if we can give our daughter a better shot in terms of her mood throughout her life, I, I don't know, I feel a moral imperative to do that. Like the Cassidys, the Collins also use genomic prediction to analyze and rank their embryo's disease risk. Then they downloaded the raw data and paid a DNA analysis company called Self Decode to get even more predictions, like whether the embryos could be adept at managing stress or suffer from brain fog or depression. So I'm downloading the, both the PDF that they gave us. And I, hold on, I can stop this. Yeah, so what we got from Genomic Prediction was just a really simple report, which I actually quite like. And so did you do IVF so that you could get data on your embryos? Yeah, we already had all of our embryos that we needed to have seven kids. We had 26 embryos good to go, but we did a whole new round just to be able to do this because it's so much additional information. Interesting. So I see these embryos have health scores ranging from like negative 0.96 to like 1.9. The Titan here, who turned out to be the, the one we selected, had the best score from our own internal, uh, like additional data calculations and genomic predictions best. Oh my gosh, hey Titan, you're number one. So wait, Titan, is that her name? Titan Invictus. What's that from? Uh, well, 
We want powerful names. And we actually have a rule in the family against giving any of our daughters strictly female names because data shows that uh, it has a lot of negative outcomes. What would you like to test for that isn't currently available on the market? IQ is the big one. Yeah. I think that that's educational the, attainment, IQ, yeah. earning potential. Like there are polygenic oh, risk scores potential. related to these. Why do you think that it's not on the market? Polygenic risk scores for things like IQ or educational attainment. Spicy. It's very spicy. It's spicy. As soon as a company comes out and says, we allow you to select for height or intelligence or anything that's like, that seems evil. Uh, or correlates with evil, um, then someone's going to come out and say they're a eugenicist, they're a Nazi, whatever, um, and that's that really bothers us. Whenever the state determines these are good genes, these are bad genes, or any course of group, or any course of group, evil always results from that. But when you're talking about family level decisions, like me and my wife know we have some deadly disease and I wanna make sure my kid doesn't get it. Or I want my kid to have the highest IQ possible <laughs> and good SAT score. Yes. Yeah. I don't think that either of those things are particularly morally questionable. But to many people, polygenic testing is an ethical minefield. Wow. Part of the problem is that IVF is already prohibitively expensive. Rich patients optimizing their children's genes for success reminds people of a dystopian society, like the 90s sci-fi film Gattaca. Genetics, what can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. None of that's happening yet, but it's not because the science isn't there. It's because the only company on the market so far is only testing for diseases. This is what we call high throughput uh, SNP array technology. High throughput SNP array technology. Yeah, so That's we, hard to say. Each well has this tiny microarray with probes that can detect the 800,000 positions in the genome within each embryo biopsy. Nathan Treff is the scientific director of genomic prediction. The company is part of a multi billion dollar fertility industry boom with investors chasing moonshots, like growing sperm and egg from stem cells in a lab and artificial wombs. But unlike those technologies, polygenic testing is here. Think of a situation, right, when a patient comes in and, and they tell you that they have diabetes. I think it's unethical not to tell them that you can actually test your embryos for risk of diabetes. And I would be angry if I found out there was a test like that and that nobody told me about it. Would genomic prediction ever go into testing for traits beyond diseases? No. At one point, genomic prediction advertised polygenic testing for intellectual disability, and you've since stopped marketing that. Why is that? I think the main reason is that uh, it really distracted from the healthcare benefits of the testing, uh, and, and the majority of patients want to reduce disease risks. Where is the line between disease and trait? It doesn't seem as simple or as black and white. No, I think it's um, an important question. And um, it, it's, I mean, we can all have our own opinions, right? It's not really society's place to tell individuals whether they should do something one way or another when, when it comes to having children. Where do you think this technology is going? Well, it's only going to get better. In the future, it'll seem silly that we didn't use this when there's an opportunity to do it. Right now in the U.S., there aren't specific regulations on polygenic testing. So how far the technology goes depends completely on the private market. And that worries bioethicist Laura Hersher. I don't object to what genomic prediction does, like across the board, what they're offering now. I also think that it's quite possible that this very limited menu of things is sort of a starter place. And if they see greater acceptance and comfort level, that we're gonna very quickly get to a place where we may be much more uncomfortable. Like what? There is sort of a nervousness around turning reproduction into this highly commercial enterprise where people are looking to um, get their hands on a certain type of child. And is that going to create a situation where people are less accepting of, you know, who and what they get. 
Do you think we've reached the line? Like we're at the point where this testing has already gone too far? One thing you learn when you're in this field is the future comes very fast. And once something is entrenched, it's very hard to either get rid of it or change expectations or uh, alter people's thoughts about what is and isn't appropriate. So the time to discuss it is, is right now. Yeah, he's up. You're sleeping hard now, bud. The Cassidys had their baby in April. Do you think about the social implications of this testing? I think it's like a hammer. You can build a house with a hammer or you can attack somebody with a hammer. But we see the positive in it right now that it's gonna allow us to have our, our family. I mean, our society is arguing about the price of insulin and what if we could just eliminate diabetes? That's the good that can come from all of it. Life is really hard for everyone. And if you can make it a little bit easier to not have health problems, then we should try to help as many people with that as we can. 